Hello, my name is John Hand. I'm going to present a paper about a novel testing regime for actual and buildings and their virtual twins. So, there's a tradition of coheating tests that started in the mid 1980s and considered in various forms since then, uh, which involve um, injecting heat into a building to bring them up to a specific temperature and then measuring what the heat or cooling required to maintain that temperature over a long period of time and then post-processing what's been observed in order to come up with a overall heat transfer coefficient for the facade. The issue with these coheating tests is that they're lengthy, they're expensive to mount, and they are not particularly designed to interact with simulation. But we also see that simulation models often do not capture the characteristics of specific buildings. They're difficult to calibrate. If we could come up with better tests for actual buildings, which we could then link in and use to calibrate our models, that might be a way forward. So we have talked about a short duration, one week pulse test regime in the paper and it's designed to expose the dynamic responses in buildings as well as in their virtual twins across a range of test conditions. The nature of the test, the kit needed, key characteristics of digital twins are explored. Although coheating has gone on for a considerable amount of time uh, because there has been a continual need to establish actual heat loss characteristics in buildings, the gap that is often talked about. In the paper, we review the history and characteristics of several methods, including P-star, cube, and coheating. Most of these involve a site audit and the use of heating or cooling devices to uh, explore how much heat is necessary to maintain a particular set point under varying conditions outside post-processing required to arrive at overall heat loss characteristics. Some of the tests are short duration, however coheating itself can run for many weeks in order to deliver time averaged heat transfer. The kit involved in uh, coheating tests typically involves fans, heaters, measuring devices. Same sort of kit is generally used in the pulse test we duplicate the primary sensors and logging devices with a secondary system so that we can uh, monitor the experiment as it's actually progressing to see um, if its status is still good. As with some other pulse tests, we also put foil over the windows in order to limit uh, solar noise. Um, the use of fans to distribute heat um, also is a good test of simulation heat transfer coefficient methods. We often use additional tests such as blower doors test to calibrate the leakage characteristics of the digital twin and also as we're doing it to highlight faults in the building which if corrected is fine but if not corrected we should include in the digital twin. The thermographic study also does several of these same tasks and is particularly good because uh, during the test the delta T is quite high and that exposes some faults which are otherwise difficult to see. Problem with coheating often is the need to establish long-term steady-state conditions in a context of ever-changing weather patterns and there are some aspects of a, a building uh, that are difficult to monitor such as infiltration rates um, and, and particularly the amount of sunlight which is impacting the, the um, heating load within the building. The pulse adapts the general idea of coheating with a distinct set of experimental phases for the building and its digital twin. There's an initial stage to drift the building from whatever its initial state is back toward ambient. This might take a day or two. At the end of this, the uh, heat embedded within the building is hopefully neutralized. There's a brief warm-up stage of 8 to 18 hours where we monitor uh, both temperatures and the amount of heat going into each room. 
We maintain the set point for 24 to 36 hours, again detecting uh, the uh, control actions needed to maintain that set point. And then there's the most important cooldown phase, which might be two th to three days in some buildings, maybe even four days, where we look at how heat or cooling is released from the building over time. The aggregate model of monitoring of energy needed to maintain condi conditions in a coheating tends to be a single number. We do it on a room by room basis. So to adapt simulation, first we create the digital twin and then we use it to design the experiment. How long do we need in each of these phases? How much capacity do we need uh, in order to reach our set point? How long is the cool down phase likely to, to last? And this helps coordinate the timings of the equipment and as well as uh, deployment of staff. Um, the digital twin is of course designed to match the experimental regime not only in terms of the form and fabric, but to mimic the actual tests being carried out. Actual uh, physical experiments tend to have faults, and so um, what we've done in the pulse test is notice the nature of those glitches and attempt to include them in the digital twin. Um, the higher level re resolution monitoring uh, allows us to look at the divergence between actual and virtual experiments and that gives us some really good clues as to what specific thing might be wrong with the, in the actual building or in the actual digital twin and helps us focus uh, our, our efforts considerably. And certainly the thermographic surveys during the experiment are quite key to identifying faults that need to be accounted for in the digital twin. So here's a case study. Um, there was a terrace house which demonstrates various construction epochs, 1930s, 1950s, 1980s. We ran simultaneously pulse tests on all of these, monitoring minutely um, heat inputs as well as temperatures. And um, some of the things that we noticed in our thermographic studies also went into the digital twin. In terms of predictions we, and measurements, we certainly saw considerable differences between the response of the different epochs in terms of air temperature and surface temperature. For the uh, 1930s epoch, the, uh, the mass of the masonry within the building um, was quite apparent, uh, especially in terms of the delay in surface warming and the differences between the resultant temperature in the space and the air, air temperature, which was the basis of the control set points. Second case study is a new housing development which used essentially 10 different construction types and a regime of four different heating uh, schemes. And the client was quite interested in which of these actually worked well, uh, what combinations of uh, construction and heating system worked well together, but were really interested in which ones they should carry forward to subsequent developments. So there was a mix of long-term monitoring, but while the long-term monitoring was going, we also did the detailed monitoring related to a pulse test and carried that out uh, in order to gain confidence in our digital twins so that we could in begin to investigate the client's, uh, by way of virtual studies, some of the client's ideas and different combinations in this case, um, the dotted lines in the graph are measurements and the solid lines are predictions. And uh, the calibration of the model in, involved uh, iterations um, to, to look at the details of both the actual building and the digital twin. It turned out that this was very good at identifying faults in both of them. It turned out that by correcting the faults, which were in fact the usual suspects, um, it wasn't actually necessary to go into a formal Monte Carlo based calibration process. So lessons learned, uh, the design of experiment was very valuable in getting in insights about what the test might, how they might progress, as well as noticing faults in the testing. And it also gave us clues about the nature of the um, buildings um, and how we could uh, deploy the kit 
uh, much more efficiently. It certainly provided us evidence about to make our digital twin work better. Sometimes we change the resolution slightly, um, but this was also a very good test of the simulation facilities on offer. Um, for example, in this particular case, um, having the fans silent for some parts of the test and blowing at full velocity at others uh, meant that we really needed to upgrade the tool so that we could schedule different heat transfer regimes to match the actual experiment. It's a novel physical and virtual testing regime. We, we talk about the similarities and differences with classic. We look at how equipment familiar to co-heating practitioners can be redeployed and experiments run in a different way uh, in order to make a better link with uh, the digital side and deliver additional value to clients. We've seen it improves the acquisition and deployment of kit if we've got multiple buildings to do. And it's um, certainly resulted in a, in a model that could be seen to demonstrate a, a good fit across a number of classic uh, scenarios in building physics. So certainly a rich source of evidence for judging novel construction techniques and a check on how well simulation might support such novel techniques. Uh, it's intriguing to think about it, to do a pulse test before and after a retrofit to provide evidence that the retrofit actually delivered what was claimed. And um, we're interested in taking forward the idea that pulse test gives us a much better uh, digital twin, which can use to, uh, as perhaps a replacement for expensive long-term monitoring, as well as exploring design ideas for future neighborhoods. Thank you very much. If you've got questions and comments, we can talk about that now.